Welcome to the DPO Group Magento 2 instruction video. To start, you're going to want to head over to GitHub, DPO Group, DPO, Magento 2, and jump onto the Releases tab. Or if you have a direct link, that's also good. You're then going to want to download the DPO Group Magento 2 plugin, version 1.1.2, for Magento version 2.4.3, which is the latest version of the plugin at the time of this recording. You might have a more recent version of the plugin, that's also okay. After downloading the file, you're going to want to save it to a safe location. I have saved it to the desktop. I'm going to extract it now. If you open the folder, inside you will see two items, a folder titled DPO and the instruction document. Inside the DPO folder, you will see another folder also called DPO, and inside that will be a whole bunch of files that we're going to need for this integration. Let's follow the instructions in the document and get this set up. The first step in this document is going to be to extract the main zip, but as we already have done this, we're going to skip that step. However, if you are unable to extract zips on your current operating system, you can download an unzipping application such as WinZip. There are many other unzipping applications available on the internet though. Just jump onto your Google browser and search for unzipping application and see what you can find. Once extracted, we can move on to step two, which is where we're going to upload the DPO folder, which is this folder over here, into your Magento 2 directory via FTP. For instance, in this case, you will have a Magento root folder, and inside there, there will be an app folder, and inside there is the code folder. If the Magento code folder does not exist inside the app folder, please create it. Let's jump onto our FTP client of choice, which is FileZilla, and start the process. You can set this up via SFTP, FTP, or direct access to the server, all of which are fine. But do be careful if you are uploading the files and not using an FTP client, as you can sometimes upload them using the wrong user, which will result in a file permission error. Magento 2 is a very sensitive application, so please take care when uploading files. If you don't use FileZilla as your FTP client, you can use another one. For this video though, we will be using FileZilla. I'm now going to access the Magento 2 root folder. In this case, it is called public HTML. Often on a web server, it will be called this. Now that I'm in the public HTML file, which is the root folder, I'm going to go to app, and then I'm going to go to code. As you can see, there's no DPO folder in here so I can copy it straight. Now just be careful here, as there are two folders here named DPO. There's the parent folder inside the root folder with the instruction document, and then there's a DPO folder inside it, which is a child folder. You're going to want to copy the parent folder, as this is the way Magento works. You have to have two folders for it to work. This may take a while to upload, so just be patient. Once the folder has been uploaded, you can close your FTP client. To proceed to the next step, you're going to need some form of a terminal with SSH. If you're using Mac OS or Linux, this is built into the system framework. Some web servers also have this built in the server backend. In this video, we're going to be using terminal on Apple Mac OS. If you don't understand SSH or CLI, which is command line interface, we highly recommend that you get your developer involved as Magento 2 is quite a beast and does require a fair amount of technical knowledge. However, you may already be familiar with these steps and if so, please bear with us as we go through it. Let's jump into the document root on the server via terminal. As mentioned earlier, when looking via the FTP client, the root document folder is the public HTML folder. If this is the case with you, what you will need to do is type in cd space and then the name of the root folder. In this case, it's public underscore HTML. Once you press enter, it should set the root folder and you will see it in the command line. So now that we're in the root folder, we can begin the process. Now in this video, I connected to the file system using the main file system owner user. However, if you are connecting using a different user, you will need to make sure that you fire the next commands using the file system owner name. To find out who the owner is, you're going to type in ls space minus la and press enter. A lot of text will appear on the screen and you're going to look for the third column which will have the username you're looking for. You're going to select and copy this username. 
unless you've logged in using this user as we have. If you've logged in using a super user, then you will need to use sudo minus u and the file system owner name. Now in this video, the user we used is not a super user. So if we say sudo minus u, which is super user do, it's going to show an error because of permissions. However, since we logged in using the file system owner, it's fine. So for the sake of this video, we're going to paste the code after the file system owner name. I'm going to paste it in now and press enter. Now it's completed. And as you can see, it says no modules were changed. What it means is that this module was previously installed on the server and there have been no updates since it was last installed. However, if it's a new install, you will see a lot more code here. Let's move on to the second line, copy it, paste it in and press enter. It may take a while to run the upgrade line, so just be patient while it runs. Once the command line with the username shows at the end, it means it's complete. Perfect. Now for the third step, I'm going to need to increase the memory limit on our server. You probably won't have to do this on your server, but if you do, you can use the code I'm adding in. Just make sure when you do it, unlike me in the video, that you remove the word PHP from after the code that we've put in and put it before the code we've put in for the memory delimit. Now, if you notice, once I press enter, it should proceed and the compile step may take a while to complete, so just be patient. Once completed, we can go on to the fourth line. But it should be noted that this deploy line might throw an error if you're using a development environment. Let's quickly demonstrate what it will look like. As you can see here, it's showing an error saying that manual static content deployment is not required in default and developer modes. But if you're in a developer environment and you don't want to spend ages for the checkout page to load, you can add a minus F at the end of the deploy code line that you've just pasted in. And that will force it to deploy. Now this step is worthwhile doing if you're on a dev setup as it does save some time, at least in my experience. So let's do that now. Now that it is complete, we can go into the fifth line in the document, which is to re-index the file system. You'll notice I also included the memory line in there. Now the last line we paste in is to clear the cache. We're nearly done with this video, so now we can exit the terminal and log into our Magento 2 backend. In the instruction document, it says we're going to need to navigate to stores, configuration, sales, payment methods, and click on DPO. So now that we're here in the back end, let's do exactly that. We're going to click on stores, then click on configuration, and wait for it to load. Then scroll down all the way to the sales drop down and click on it. Then scroll down to payment methods and click on that. Now you may have a lot of payment methods showing on your website. So what you're going to do is scroll down till you find the one that says DPO, which is a drop down, and expand that. Now there are quite a few settings on here that you'll have control over. The first one is the enabled setting. If yes, it means that this payment gateway will be enabled on your front end. If no, it means it will be disabled. It's our recommendation to leave it enabled. The title block is what it will show on the storefront. Test mode is the third item. If you leave it as yes, it will set this payment gateway in test mode and allow you to make test transactions to make sure that it's working. If set to no, it means your website is fully live and you can now start transacting. We're going to leave it on test mode in this video. Below that is company token and service type. This will be provided to you by the DPO group and you can paste it in here. Below that is the payment from applicable countries dropdown. At the moment, we have set all countries to be selected, but if you want to have payments from specific countries, simply click on specific countries and click on the countries you want to accept payments from. Below that, you have the send order email option, which will send the user an email once a successful order is created. Then there's a new order status dropdown. This is the order status that the order will be set to before the payment has come through. You can set it to any order status on the website, but pending is the default. Below that is the send invoice email, this is sent when the successful invoice is created. You can set it to no or yes. The instructions can be any text you want, but it's recommended to leave it as the default text, which is pay via DPO. Then you have the successful order status dropdown. Once an order is successfully paid, then the system will change the order status to one of your choice. Two commonly used ones are either processing or complete. Once you're done, you're going to click the save config button at the top right corner of the window. 
Now that this is done, we're going to go to the cache management page to refresh the cache. At the top of the page, there is a link to cache management. But if that link does not show, you can click on system and click cache management. On the right hand side under status, you can see all of the caches that are currently flushed and you can see all the caches that need to be flushed. If it says invalidated, it means you need to clear that cache. Simply find where it says invalidated, click in the checkbox alongside that, and at the top left, click the submit button. As long as you see all of the green blocks that say enabled, it means the caches are all working. Let's now go to the front end and check if the payment gateway is working. Once you get to checkout on the payment method page, there might be multiple payment gateways. You're going to look for the payment gateway we just added, which is the DPO group payment gateway. You're going to select that payment gateway and click the place order button. If this integration was successful, you'll be redirected to the DPO payment gateway page. As you can see, we've got DPO group in the top left corner, and this is the correct payment gateway. This means that the integration was a success. And that's all there is to it.